Well, it's a rather sombre welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Crew tonight, guys. It's not great out there, is it? It really, really is not great. This coronavirus has got us on the defensive all over the world. We got it in the UK, it's everywhere. Italy, Spain, now America, it's GS. Like a giant snowball, we can't seem to stop. But hopefully, hopefully, we will. Now then, I know it's not great times out there. We're all, we're all on the lockdown. I guess it's the only thing we can do, isn't it, really? We've got no choice, because it's gonna bloody eat us otherwise. So, we've gotta stick with it. I'm doing the best I can here. Can't get out fishing. Luckily, I've got plenty of films on file, and I've got some, just stuff that I do, just stuff, what we'll call stuff that I do myself, that I'm putting up to try and give you some form of distraction from this nightmare scenario that's almost like a film. Isn't it like a film? Anyway, I know a lot of you are in a worse, worse spot than a great number of people who are in big problems. have got big problems. Now, I've got a comments here. Let's see if I can get through it. It's from, uh, I guess, one of our supporters. It's, um, it says this. Anyway, I'll see how far I get with it. Hi, Graham. Great video. This is two films ago, I think it's Friday's, last Friday's video. Great video, and I thought, just as something to show how much my family loves my dad, who is sadly in St. Peter's Hospital with an oxygen mask on and two drips because of coronavirus. I mean, you gotta hate this thing, you really gotta hate this thing, haven't you? Please could you shout out his name? He wants a shout out. His name is Michael Copley, so Michael Copley, you're getting a shout out on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hang in there, guys. You know, everybody in the world, tough it out. Please could you shout out his name is Michael Copley and I'm his son, Jamie Copley. Could you say that his family loves him and especially his son and for him to never give up fighting and we all want, sorry, and we all want him back home, including his dog, Charlie. Well, there you go, Michael Copley. We give you a shout out, and Jamie, and the dog, Charlie. Don't we all need a shout out, guys? Anyway, I got really, I'm gonna use it. I don't care if they demonetize it. I'm getting really pissed off with this coronavirus because it's hurting our people, uh, the hospital people on the front line, the doctors, the nurses, just everybody. It's a nasty piece of equipment, isn't it? But we've got to come back at it. Unfortunately, we've got to stand up for it. So TA Fishing, just one old man and a camera, going to stand up for it. And I've put together what I consider the best film I can to try and lift you guys, to get a bit of hope in there. Look, I don't feel great not fishing, but there's people a lot worse off than just, oh, I can't go fishing, isn't there? But I've pummeled into as many minutes as I can here. It's a long film, about 50 minutes. <laughs> You might not want to watch it with the data on your phone, eating up your data. But I just thought it would be a distraction for you guys. So, third film in a row. I do apologise, late putting up. I had trouble with the software as well. It's a big film, it's got loads and loads of edits in. I've done the best I can. Enjoy, hopefully you do. If you want to copy, paste it, send it to a friend, it might perk them up. It might just distract them for one hour. Guys, here it is. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe, maybe we're going to get through this thing very shortly. Sit back and enjoy.
Well boys, I'm having a bit of a bonfire down the bottom there. I'm looking up here thinking, is that a hedgehog or something? Let's check this out, this is not normal. I'm not gonna to get too close. It's a pigeon. Just there. In a sorry state of affairs. It looks like a plastic one. I've no idea whether it's actually stone dead or not. But there is a disease called botulism, which is a serious one and I think is transmissible to humans. I'll just zoom in on his head. Now, there he goes. What the heck was that all about? There's something wrong with his head. There he goes again, he's crashed. I didn't think he was right. Let's check him out, he's crashed again. It could be botulism. I'm hoping it's not coronavirus or bird flu, but he's crashed over here. That is not a world pigeon, people. If I had a stick on the other side of the fence, it probably should be whacked on the head. That is not right. His head's broken or something. His neck's broken, he's going to crash? Crash. Oh dear. I think he must have flown into something and his head is broken. Oh, his neck's broken, I don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. I think I shall dispatch this one with a large stick because that is not a well bird. Answers on a postcard. What do you think is wrong with this? Disease or is it flown into something that broke his neck? The feather's on the back of his neck. Oh, I see. He's got a red mark on the top of his head with some blood coming out. So I think the best thing I can do is dispatch him. Well, I dispatched the pigeon, left it over the fence, and obviously along came what? A predator, Mr. Fox, Mr. Red Kite. What ate it? Didn't leave much. And these are some of the huge pampas that I grew from small plants. They need trimming, just a little light trimming, totally awesome style. All the work I've been doing outside, monster bonfire, burning down my pampas grass. As you no doubt saw earlier, so I've actually finished there, I'm exhausted. I want to go fishing tomorrow. Going to the old tackle room. I had the reels, which were light four weights, hanging up with the reel on them. Something's dropped in there, and as it's gone down, it's, it's broken this piece. It's come unscrewed. Now I had had problems with this one before. So I'm going to try and glue this together there, look, there. Tonight I've still got the screws, but the screws don't actually fit far enough in there. So, nightmare number 53. I've got the G-stove going. I'm going to have to have something to eat. It's now five past three. I haven't even had lunch yet. So my lunch today, boys, because <laughs> when we went out the supermarket, <laughs> I think all that was left was Reduced 45p salad, 
It was stripped. I've never seen anything like it in my life, I must admit. And a pizza, which I've got here. There we go, we're gonna have some pizza. Well, I'm gonna try and cook it in the G stove oven, folks, which is currently cranking at about 200 degrees. I've got it well up. I had rain in the bottom of the G stove, came down the pipe, it driven in there. Never had that before, and it did something to stop the flame going. So, a little bit of Barbie fluid in there, got it going, you know what I'm saying? Squirt, stand clear, boom, away we go. Don't do that, kids. So, to fit this into there, into the oven, I'm going to have to use either a knife or I thought I'd use these scissors. And I recognised them because I think. That's the one that my wife used for her toenails. That's right, big ones. she got big toenails. So I'm gonna cut this in sections, put it in a bit of tin foil here so it doesn't stick to the grill, pop it in there for 20 minutes, and while that's cooking, we'll have a check out on the tackle that I'm hopefully gonna be using tomorrow. Or I could, I, could, I could make a barber's. I think I would actually be well self-employed as a barber. Who knows where this virus business is going? It is just bizarre. There we go. I'm looking at the size of that. It's quite a small oven. I'm gonna do this in sections. I've had them in there before. Hopefully it's gonna fit. I make these little parcels like this because I don't want it running all over the grill, which means, that's right, I've got a clean leather grill. Oh, I measured that one well. There we go, we're at 250 degrees. Oh, I couldn't, I could have got them in, and I know that's hot. I could have got, uh, I could have got the whole pizza in there, boys. Graham, that's gonna be very, very hot. Why not? Having bought the tongs, crush that, push it in. There's the temperature there, 200 and something. As soon as you open the door, obviously it goes down. Oh, there we go, it's ripping now. I had a hell of a job lighting it. But it's away now. I think get a kettle on as well, and we'll check this tackle out. Oh, the old kettle is bubbling away here. That is hot. I'm gonna shut that down a tad, I think. That's better, All right. That's dropped to just under 200. You can't beat a cup of tea. Look, with a wood stove, I've got a well, I've got water. You only need bread and something like rice and you'll survive. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, okay, right, pizza, yeah, and pizza. I think that's done. Oh, yeah, yeah, and salad, I know what you're saying. And oh, yeah, and, uh, and salad cream, yeah, I suppose, yeah, it's true, yeah. Let's check this one out. What do you think, top one's burnt, people? Oh, no, that's done. And that's done to me, please. Oh, ow! <laughs> yeah, that's done. It's, that one's done all right. It's stuck for everything. These little stoves, you can survive on this, it's wood, it's a wood burner. Absolutely perfect. I can pop these others in the bottom like this. Close the door. Temperature's dropped a bit. Whatever. Don't do what I do. Put the knife down here and just catch light with the with the knife. And of course, obviously, the kettle on put to one side. I'm going to try and glue this in a minute. I've got some arrow dye. First things first. The thing is, people, we've got so much to be getting on with. I've got a spoon, so I have to use a fork. Never stir with a knife, you'll stir up strife. That's the old saying. The other thing you have to do is forget the milk. I think this is a meal fit for a king. Salad cream on pizzas, every year. Who has a dressing on pizzas? Or do you just have the pizza on its own? What's your favorite? Do you put barbecue sauce on it? Ketchup, salad cream, or what, guys? Check that out all courtesy of Mr. G-Stove. Excuse me while I digest this lot. Give the wife her toenail scissors back. So there we go, got the tea on guys. Just excuse me, I'm just gonna eat this now and I'll get right back to you with this tackle.
And let's just hope I don't eat the microphone as well. Mm. So, here is the reel with a broken reel seat. Oh, it's come adrift from there. You can see I've had a good old chew and a glue. Chew and a glue, that sounds good. Pop that off. So I've had it happen before, but the, I should probably try and get some bigger screws to go in there. And I didn't want them going right through and damaging the fly line. And it's only the real seat at the end of the day. If I chip off this little bit of surplus glue, put a fresh bit on there, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll be set for tomorrow. This, by the way, is called, I can't even see it. It's like a Wickham's, what's that? Three inch diameter reel. This would be a sort of little drag rim control there. So, put a nice clicker. And you can reverse that. And of course, the clickers, you know, if you want to take them off, you take them off of there. That's got dual clickers there. In fact, that's not a drag, I don't think. I think that's a, a, an adjuster to the tension on the springs inside. Make sure you don't pinch your reel line through there. Put it through. Take it out. Oh, so, see what I've done? That head on it. A weight forward, number four, floating. So, light, but what I intend doing is repairing this and then before they shut me down totally from moving around the countryside I'm going to try and catch trout let's get this glued there. if I put glue around there just in here like that and set that in that broken area there I'm hoping that's it perfect this could work it could work people there's a bit of, I'm going to be using two part epoxy which is Araldite, everybody knows what Araldite is if I can ever get it off. Just a little tiny bit, that's all it needs, spec. You get sort of, I think about five or ten minutes at different speeds, you know, you can get a rapid setting one. This one won't, won't really need moving because they have a what I have to use, a piece of broken twig. Mix the two together. Yeah, the um, you get a sort of 24 hour one, which I think goes really, really nice on hard. That's a standard one. Or you can get a rapid drying one, which of course dries rapidly. But I mean, it gives you, one of them gives you a little bit of time to move it and adjust things, which I won't need to do because those holes lined up there. Hopefully. If I put this near that G-stove, I've already melted one of my mum's best knives, old knife I had. Just dab that on there. Hopefully it's all going to bind in there, just like this. Oh, it's located in there. Now, very easy once that's in there to forget about it. And a little bit of arrow dry or glue trickles over there, so I'm going to take the spool out. Right, clever grab. That way if there is any glue between the rim, the edge of the rim and here, it should actually not glue the actual reel together. It does happen, I know it sounds stupid, but I think I'm better off doing it that way. So fingers crossed, let's run through the other rod and reel I'm gonna be using. Eight feet long, two piece. What's called snake guide rings there, can you see those? Just snake guide rings there. The butt ring there, just a regular circular butt ring with the inside, could be aluminium oxide, something like that, just a regular Fuji type ring, same those sort of things. Uh, screw winch fitting at the bottom, I can show you that to take the fly wheel. It's all for beginners, beginners, beginners. So, eight feet, it's called, I'll tell you what it's called, because I've had it 30, 35 years. A target TA80 graphite. TA80, OMG, a TA80? I don't know what it means either. Eight foot, I suppose. So this will be very light for trout fishing. Not super light, but you know, it will be a light outfit. And I'm gonna couple it. Obviously you don't want a great big heavy reel because that's gonna make it wear your wrist out as well. So the downside with this is, although I've got either, whichever reel I wanna use on there, floating line, sinking, tapered, whatever, the fly line itself weight will be, let's say, overweighted slightly. It might be five. Might be, if this is a, a four weight AFTM 8 
four weight rod you would put a five you try and overline it a bit to give you a bit of flex to make that rod work to be able to cast now the downside these are fun sticks these are just for fun fishing really that well it's sort of a downside and an upside the downside is you're not going to cast a long way with these you know the the, the other downside is you get some memory retention on a very small reel it's wound up like this a fly line so you might want to just hold it a, a while stretch it the plasticizer out don't snap your fly line just take that memory out before you start fishing you'll get those few extra yards maybe even feet now if you want to reach a fish further out in the lake close range no problem let's say 20 yards would be a long way with one of these rods if you want to reach that fish with a weighted heavily weighted nymph because you want to get down to the fish in clear water you're going to have to go down in your fly size because the weight of the fly alone will make your lead or your line collapse on both the back cast and on the forward cast. So you'll be fighting and fighting and fighting and it just goes crash or hook up the hedge, crack, crash, pull up, not good. So take my tip, if you're fishing light ones like this, for close range you can get away with a big nymph because you just sort of flick it or just toss it through the air 10 or 20 feet. If you're going for distance casting, not a huge distance, but in relation to this outfit, then my suggestion would be go to a small weighted nymph, very small, and that way the fly and the fly leader will unroll properly and you'll get a straighter presentation. The other rod is stupid. I'm going to start with that one first, that TA80 first. This one, wait for this people, is called a Viper. Won't give you the mate, but it's XT Carbon. <gasps> oh my god, it's about 35 years old and they had XT Carbon back then. Even shorter, 7 feet long. Rated 4, but we'll take a 5. Same principle, snake guides, snake tip ring, single butt ring there. The reel, again, just two piece, is even smaller. A 680 MG Super Light Magnesium. I'm so impressed. I can't even spell magnesium. It's that one. That is either an intermediate and it has a button in there as well, which you can use to take the spool off if you want to interchange spools. And this normally I thought was a neutral. Yeah, it is. That's a weight forward neutral line. See it? It's got it WF4N. So it's a weight forward, four weight neutral. But the rod is very, very, very tippy. So I'm going to sort this mess out here, tie a couple of new leaders on, and then basically, and this is a sort of, I'm going to call this, if you can look at that, can you see how it opens up? It's like a rimless one, almost a cageless reel, which is quite a nice design. You don't get the line pinch when you put, if you're changing spools, I thought that's quite a good idea. Nice little reel, I like that one. So we might, neutral means it's just basically barely, barely sinking. If you grease it, it will stay on the top. If you degrease it, put some, uh, you know, wash up liquid on it, it should sink slowly like this, it's called neutral. So you can get away with that as well. We'll try both of those, now then. Having seen me do a bit of pampas cutting, huh, about five tonnes of pampas grasses I've cut. I can't even burn them out there now, it's just, you know, got damp, got wet, I can't burn those now. I'll tell you what, in here it must be close to 75 degrees. I've got down here, I've got my aldite hopefully going off there. Turn that up so I don't get any drips going down there. So, just before I think we're due to get shut down, by the time you see this film, we might even have a cl close down, shut down, lock down. Fingers crossed I can get out fishing and catch something on this, guys. It might be my last fishing trip for some time. I hope I catch. Where am I going to take you? I'm going to take you to Arrington Fishery, but wait for this, because I'm on these light rods, I'm going to be fishing on their catch and release lake. Now, I spoke to Aaron, the manager, and apparently he's been fishing pretty well. I want to get down there at this time of year. Now, I fish quite a bit this winter. I've done really, really well on the trout fishing. I don't normally start trout fishing till mid-April into mid-May, normally, normally. I fish right through January and February, had some of the best fishing I've ever had fly fishing. Very, very successful I've been. Must be my skill, I feel. Um, yeah, no, it's just that, it's just that water's been in good condition, the fish have been in good condition, and they've been biting, and that's what it's all about. So, we're going to have a run down there. As I say, guys, I don't know what I'm going to catch, but it is catch and release. I love a bit of catch and release, and, well, are we going to catch? I certainly hope so. 
There'll probably be quite a few other anglers here because having just been fishing really well lately and some nice fish coming through the system. So they might be busy, but it is what it is. I'm gonna try and get up early, eight o'clock or something like that. <laughs> Most of the guys have gone home by then. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed this little segment and let's finish it off with a couple of fish. Wish me luck. Wow, it's cold boys. I'm down here at Avington. Easterly wind, biting easterly wind. I'm gonna to have to just do this bit in here. You probably see the camera doing this in the wind. They've got a competition on the two main lakes and um, I wanna come straight down. I'm actually early, wait for this. Lie down with shot guys, five past nine in the morning. Oh, not good is it? But anyway, I figured after they done the competition fishing there, they're gonna to wanna to come on the catch and release lake. So I wanna be first on the catch and release lake. I figure there's every chance in the first two or three casts of picking up a fish. It's cold, I won't last very long. I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to go back and get another jacket. But I'm trying to tuck in here, out the wind. I'll tell you what, boys, I wish I could fish from in here. Can't quite get a good back cast going. So let's get over in this corner here. I figure it's gotta be the wind off my back and slightly off my shoulder. I don't want to be casting the fly line and it goes all in the back of my head and I don't want to be tangled up in the trees over there. So I'm going to give it a go, see if we can't pick a fish up for you, catch and release. Do you know what? It's good to be out with that virus around. This might even be last trip for a very long time. Got to make the most of it, cold or not. So I stretched my fly line because I think I mentioned earlier when I was in the tackle shack, this is a small arbor reel. It's very small diameter. I lost a little tag off this thing, it's a bit annoying, it's a little grip, that should hold. The wind is just awful. So I've stretched my fly line a little bit here, sorry about the camera movement, that's what you're going to get. Um, just to take those kinks out and try and make it, look, th there's the kinks here, look, let me show you. That's the kinks coming off the reel, okay, and that's a bit I've stretched, you see, don't break your fly line. So, if I can get out there, I reckon I'll get a fish pretty, pretty short order. The wind is just a horror story. I need to stretch all this line. They tell me in here, our own fishery manager said there's browns, rainbows, tigers, and spartics. I don't actually believe I caught a spartic. I've got a fly called When All Else Fails on there. And I'm going to do fight fast tweaks like this. Probably going to get a pretty snappy, sharp take with a fish, if I do get a fish. I'm not sure I'm going to have to go and get my other jacket, people. Now they certainly see this. This wind is something else. A four weight line is not the, really the rod to be using in this situation. No, no, I mean, look. Why does it have to be where I stand? Right, concentrate there. Sometimes a fast, tweaky take will evoke a response. Right through a piece of weed, hard to believe. I'm just a little bit concerned that I might not be able to get far enough out to pick a fish up with this four way. I might have to go to the bigger one my bigger seven eight weight rod, heavier line, forward taper, try and punch the line out a little bit farther. Catch and release fishing. At the moment, there's no catch involved, is there? That's not good. If not, I'm gonna move right around the other side and put the wind on my left shoulder The wind's, the wind's helping carry the fly down the lake, but you've got to watch it doesn't whack into the back of your head. Whoa! <laughs> That's how windy it is. The camera's moving all over the place. So I wanted to actually uh, use my, my pole here so you can get the hook up, but it's not going to happen. The wind is, is moving the camera like this, so I'm going to go to the head cam, guys. Just bear with me a second. So let's try. Oh, fish just moved over there. Maybe if I fish that side, I've got a gap. Oh, come on. Took it on the drop. 
took it on the drop. <laughs> the, the skill factor there. Oh, he's off. The skill factor there, folks, was zero. <laughs> I was just saw a fish move over in that corner, and he took a static fly on the drop. Wow. Hope. Hope springs eternal. Oh man, it's impossible. Woo! Look at it, look at the cat's paw. Right, we try again over there, boys. I can barely get the fly where I want it at the moment. I'm fishing it. Now this is bizarre. I mean, I'm fishing it quite fast, to be honest, because I saw that fish flash behind the fly. Whereas in fact, the actual take when I had that hook up, it was static, nothing was happening. Another angler's just turned up over there, so my my time is limited. I cannot get a, a decent line down there, even with the wind. That might do it. That might do it. See, there's a tree there. And although it's got no leaves on it, it would just create a bit of sort of, I'm going to call it shelter for the fish. It's a feature, isn't it? It's a feature at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just hopeless. Well, I've come around the other side. It's just, I can't fish it. Oh God, the hat's going. I can't fish there. Just the way it is. I'm going to have to try this side and see if I can send the fly out through there and at least cover a bit of different ground. Fish on boys, got to fish on. My goodness, I had to change flies. Let's get this line back, I'm going to walk back and clear that line right. Here we are, there's something wrong with that reel handle. Oh look at this, look at this where the line's gone around the tree. Wow. Now, no monster fish in here, but it's a real good one. Oh, perhaps there are some monster fish in here. Now, I changed over to sort of green damsel. I wonder if that's the fly. A little bit darker. I went from that light one down to a dark one. It seems, seems to have done the distance. There he's going well. This is why I like fishing these light rods. And I've had some really big fish on these uh, four weights, but of course, the thing is casting. It's not so much playing the fish; it's the casting that is the problem. Let's have a look at this one. See what it is. Come on, baby, you can do it. And barbless. They can come off at any time. I'm standing, I'm finding it a bit, bit strange because I'm trying to shield this microphone from this, this wind here. Now I glued this fitting last night and something is with the winch fitting here is not right. The keeps want to come loose, which I don't like. Wowee, he's pulling, that's for sure. Well, I changed leader, I changed fly. Could it have done the job? What is this fish? It's going bloody well. Oh, nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Nice rainbow, people. Nice rainbow. Don't go in. Come to Uncle Graham. Come to YouTube. Wow, well, he's still going well. It's amazing the difference between a, a four weight and say a seven weight rod. The amount of pressure you can put on a fish. I mean, this one is scrapping well, I've got to say. All right, a leader's just clunk through the rings, which is not a good idea. I got him. 
beautiful fish. It's a flies falling out. The, that's barbless for you people. A very, very quick lift. Because we're keeping him in the water. A lovely rainbow. And away he goes. Wow. Blank and the skunk is out of the boat. The brambles are in the boat. But of course what I've done, very sensibly, is forget my hand wipe. So now I'm frozen. I'm on again boys, really right in close, ridiculously close. I'm going to strip this one by hand because this reel takes a bit of time just to get the line back on. There's the fish. I might actually, look the net's still wet. I might just go for this one quickly. Oh look at that. Don't forget when you're playing a fish like this let the line release it, let it slide like this through your fingers. Don't just clamp and lock on it because you will lose the fish. I say he's a tad smaller than the last one. Just a tad, I just showed him to you in the water there. Look. Lovely looking fish. I mean they really are. Now don't get my camera lens wet buddy. I'm only trying to, yeah, the hook's falling out. That's the beauty of, the beauty of barbless. And there's a the fish. Come on. Out you come. And there he goes. Sweet. Two for two. Well, no, I've actually missed about six, to be honest. Be truthful, Graham. Be truthful. Now my hands are really cold and wet again. Oh. Right, stripping in. I've got another one, guys. Lost another fly up the tree. I put on, I think it's one of Sid Knight's Blue Flash Damsel, I think it's called. Might be a Blue Flash Damsel. I've lost one and I'm hooked up again. But this rod is uh, very good for tippy action, but you've got to be careful when you draw the rod back at a cute angle like this to net the fish that you don't put a bend in it like this and crack and splinter your lovely light rod. It is, after all said and done, a light rod for basically fun fishing. I mean, there's people around who go, oh, I caught huge fish on a four weight. Yeah, I have as well, but it doesn't make me a better angler. It's just a different way of fishing, isn't it? It's just nice to have a bit of sport. It's not that you're better angler because you're fishing with lighter and lighter tackle. And I've got a six pound leader on. I'm certainly not uh, not going light, am I really? The worst of the wind, I think, has gone. And there he is. There is the fly in his jaw. I'm calling that a blue flash damsel. Somebody might call it something different. And here's the fish just going away. Gone. That one's jumping, got a lot of weed on the line. Let's just strip it in by hand, this one. I'm going to wash the extra weight of the weed. Oh, great shot, great shot. This is one to jump, that's three jumps in a row. What if he's trying to get rid of that weed weight on the line? It looks like a touch bigger fish. Just a touch. I feel he's going to jump again. Wow, I've got the rub buckled over. There he is, there he is. You come to Uncle God, looks like another rainbow. So no sign of the elusive browns yet. Might get this one first guy. I think the weed might have slipped over his head. Yes. He's in. You see the gob of weed on the fly there. That's just enough to make me lose that fish. So I was lucky there. Beautiful fish. Look at the quality of that. Away it goes. Boys, it's howling again. But the good news is I've got number seven hooked up. I must have lost six. Not bothering with the reel, as you can see, I'm just stripping in like this, drawing it in slowly, and then letting it slide out when he wants to run. I let the line slide through my fingers. Do not lock off on the fish. You will lose it. Just strip in nice and smooth. I don't think I've known a wind like this come out of the east as strong as this for as long as it's come blowing. Big trees come down way over the back there, they're in 
blocking the road and uh, trying to clear it. Well, they haven't been blocking the road, they've been trying to unblock the road, Graham. Wow, this is a good scrapper, though. I have still to catch a brown. These have been all rainbows. And of course, by stripping in like this, you don't get any slack line at all. You should keep constant pressure on that fish. It's certainly going well, this one. And this is where you don't always need giant trout. Sometimes a smaller trout um, will actually fight better than a bigger one because I'm on a four weight, so I'll get a more accentuated fight out of this one. And I think we catch him at least, folks. Is that a brownie? The thing we catch and release is it doesn't really matter if it comes off because it's going to go back anyway, which is nice. Here he comes. Here he comes. No, it's another rainbow. Come on, baby. This one is a scrapper and a half. Let's hope he's tired when he gets into the net and he's in the net. A very swift look at the fish there. That is absolutely superb. Will be if I put the fly in my finger. What a beaut. This one's take me right out and I've got a twig on the line. I've got to clear of that. I've come right around the other side and I'm doing back casting in here. This looks like a nice rainbow. I'm going to have to walk up here a bit. There's my nets up here. Where else would it be, Graham? Except near you. That's better. Well, this blue flash damsel thing is doing the business. This is number 11. If I get it in, and it is a very nice rainbow. He has absolutely throated that. Absolutely. There's the hat gone. That shows you how windy it is. Unbelievable today. Unbelievable. There he goes. What a fish. Well, I'm on 12 now. I'm moving up the lake, but look, here's a sort of little tip. I've said it before, even with big fish, it's like a giant tarpon of 100 pounds. They could certainly swim off the Florida Keys in two feet of water, but they feel really nervous in there. And the same goes for trout, and indeed, a number of other fish as well. They can go in the shallow water, in this case, it would be between the weed. The weed to the surface makes it shallow. It makes them feel nervous in that sort of two feet. Yes, they could certainly swim in it, but they don't seem to like it. So you'd be looking for slightly deeper pools, a little bit deeper areas. And it always used to be deep up this end. I'm going to give it a couple of throws here. And then I think, you know what? I'll try and go on that uh, big two lakes and see if we can't get off a bigger fish out of it. So I'm going to give it a throw in this pool here. 
not going to spend a lot of time here but over there you can see it's sort of deeper and darker and I feel if trout are in this lake they're unlikely to be in the middle bit they're going to be at both ends where it's slightly deeper I thought I saw a flash I thought I saw a flash farther back so it doesn't hurt sometimes just to pause let the fly sink a bit deeper and then bring it up on an arc again oh I've dropped the fly line oh that was luck what's that luck oh my oh and he's off but there you go the fact that I stopped even to talk to the camera just let the fly sink down like that they'll follow it down you start again and as soon as it rises the fish will grab it because really although these are fed on as it were and then stocked it doesn't take them longer the smaller sizes to start realizing insects generally hatch at the bottom and work to the surface there's not too many that land on the surface and swim to the bottom so they're used to that arc so that drawing up sort of uh, sequence so it's nice to know there's fish down this deep end and that's exactly what I thought it was going to be nothing in the middle just both ends but I've got to do back casting the only way I can get out here and get any over to that deep pool is by thrashing the life out of the rod and trying to get back as far as I can over there is slightly definitely deeper if I go around the other side fine I've got the wind in my face the sun's in my face I see nothing so I figure this is the way to do it well, 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 I wonder if there's any more at home. Any more at home like him. That was a nice fish, that was probably three pounds. Caught me on the hop, I should not be filming, I should be concentrating. Is he about? Smith, he's here somewhere. Almost sure if there's rainbows, there's gonna be more than one. I might have to go and get my full size rod. I mean, look. I've caught 12 fish on a four weight. I've shown you that the light tackle can be great fun, but I'm not getting where I want to get. There's a fish just swirled right past my fly. And this color, this fly in the water, maybe I'll get the underwater camera, I'll just show you what it looks like. It really, really, really stands out. I mean, I can see it 20 yards out in the water. I'm not a great lover of really garish colored flies, but listen, if they're working, they're working. Definitely, it shelves, it goes across here with the weed, shelves down, and I'm right on the limit of this little rod of actually getting out there and dropping the fly in that, over that shelf, or over in the deeper water, bring it up and over the top. Tried a fast retrieve guys, just about to move, and one absolutely slammed it. It is another rainbow. Woo, mama mia, the wind. wearing out one arm after the other. It does not want to turn around this way. people I'm down to pretty well the last cast I've hooked a fish up here it probably doesn't feel that big actually just working my way back to the car now I am the last man standing what a setty horrible wind ripple on the water should be good for trout just about 30 knots too much ripple on the water and I've got a decent fish on here. It's pretty much the same size. 
as the ones I've been catching, I think. All I did was go along the margins and just saw a fish laying static. I bounced the fly up and down for ages because all the other anglers have obviously thrashed the heck out of it. And there you go. Nice rainbow to finish a day. And this looks like one going home for tea. Well, don't say that, Graham. Don't say that, mate. Don't say that. Don't. Didn't scrap much. Now, this is on a gold head daddy. Get in there. There we go, people. Great fish to finish with, boys. Guys, got a big one. Got a real, real, real big one hooked up. I don't know how far I'm going to get here. Just, I've, I've had a, five or six goes at him. I finally got him hooked up. Now, we're going to stay attached to him. So I think, I think I'm on a barbless hook. So I'm just trying to get sorted out. Get the camera on as usual. I can't tell you how many fish I've lost. There we go. This is a whole a different ball game, this one, boys. A whole different ball game. I must have had 20 minutes fishing at this one. I'm not even standing up at the moment so I don't want to spook the fish. What a day. I've had 17 trout so far guys. 17 trout. This is in the uh, big boys park, this one. This is a big fish. This one's not five pounds, I can tell you that now. Right. Going to creep towards him. Oh look, it's a there's a guy with a net there, that, that's him. He's got a fish on, must be the bloke next to me. Oh! That was weird. I just kept plugging and plugging and plugging away at it. Oh, look at that against the light. I do hope we don't get shut down with this virus. Just when the fishing's coming good. Now this one could ping off at any time, folks. Any time. That's a good fish, man. That's a good fish. And those who watched the last film, I had this as a left hand reel. I've managed to, uh, it's Tony Palmer's reel. And uh, it was in our fishing show on Abington when I had some really good fishing here. And I've got it working perfectly now. I can wind on this side. I've got a feeling this fish might ping off. I may be wrong. This would be nice to show you. big fish. Eights, maybe, maybe eights, I don't know. I've got a lot of pressure on there. Oh. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, guys. Look at that sunshine. Sunshine or we might not be able to come out, it's ridiculous. It's got to be done, though. He's getting near net time. He is getting near net time. Oh, it's a chunk. That is a kachunker. I could do as he fighting. Here he comes, here he comes. Fly is a pearly daddy, people. What a fish to finish off with. He's just absolutely nailed it in the nose. Absolutely, just in the nose. Got a chance, got a bit of a chance. I can't get him in. He swam in, how keen was that? How keen was that, people? Look at this one. Hold still, buddy. That has to be, look with it. There's it, right in the roof of the mouth. Locked in the roof of the mouth. Beauty. I tell you, it's about eight and a half, but won't quite make nine. Cracker jack fish. Well, folks, what a day I've had. 
I finished, wait for this, 18 trout. That last one must have been, it's around the eights, just around about that seven and a half to eight and a bit, I guess. Um, so that's going back for tea. So just give you an idea. Oh, by the way, this here behind me, it's not where I live, I wish I did, this close to the lakes. This is the corporate headquarters where they do corporate and I guess bulk functions um, down here at Arrington when you want a bit of uh, comfort, as they say, and it is, it's a really nice building, look. Got the view over the lake here, absolutely perfect, idyllic. The wind, thank the Lord, has finally gone down. As you can see, those are almost horizontal, those uh, willow branches today. If you want a catch and keep ticket, you can get that here in the UK. I mean, that's what this basically is. But the third lake down there, at the time of making this film, is catch and release. And that's really good. Now, catch and release, just so you know, guys, you're not going to get catch and release that I know of anywhere in the UK where you're going to get like 10 pound trout. They don't fare well in and out of the water. I think the ceiling weight would be about three to four pounds maybe, maybe five, six pounds. And that would be, you know, my recommendation. Obviously fish farmers will tell you and people who do catch and release will tell you what the survival rate is best at. But nevertheless, it lets you relax. It lets you, there's no stress on you. have got to catch your limit, you know. You could just pay your money and just fish all day like I have. You can change flies, you can do dry fly, you can do whatever the rules say you can do. Um, nymphs, wet flies, anything, anything. Experiment, leaders, whatever, fly lines, try it all. And that gives you more confidence when you do go on hard water. The other benefit is you don't have to lug all the trout around with you, which is uh, a bit of a drag if you go down the end of the fishery or any fishery indeed, and you're, you're carting all the trout around, and then you've got to gut them and clean them. So basically, I've had a great day's fishing here, and I've just got a couple of fish for tea. Well, well very big tea, actually. <laughs> the last one's a very big tea. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Give it a go here. Catch and release trout fishing. It patently, obviously, it does work, because I've just done it. Um, I've done it in other fisheries as well. But here at Arrington, you know, there are some really good sized fish in there. I'd say my biggest one today, I guess, will be probably about three pounds, something around three pound mark. Average two-ish, around about a two pound mark, so good fighting fish. Got them on four weights as you saw. Got out the big guns here. That's Tony Palmer's one you saw in our previous Avington film. That's his reel, and I do like that line. Really impressed with the line, and I'm in love with the reel now. That It's a bit heavy for this type of work, obviously, but it's the actual fly line. Enables me to cast right in the middle of the lake and get uh, fish I possibly might not be able to reach otherwise. So, going to love you and leave you guys. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button. Hit it on Mike's TA Outdoors as well. And we'll do our best wherever we can to keep these fishing films coming. I'm going to chill for a while. This is summer setting. Mm -hmm.